Okay guys, I'm gonna explain this problem of division two, 632B, and I'm gonna explain to you guys how to do this problem. Okay, so what is the problem? So basically, you're given this array, and you can perform this operation. I could pick two indices, I and J. J has to be greater than I, by the way. And I add the elements up, and then I replace my Jth index with that value. So if I pick these two, I'm gonna add negative one to zero, and then that's gonna get me one, negative one, negative one, because I'm gonna replace my jth value, this value, with the sum of these two, right? Negative one plus zero, ne negative one, right there, okay? And so what are the operations I could do with this? So let's say I have negative one, zero again. I could do, I could get to one, negative one, negative one. I also could pick these two, right? And then replace this jth value, right? This i and j, and then replace this value. So I could add these up and I get one. One plus negative one is zero. So I'm gonna replace my jth value with that, so zero. Zero. And then now, what's the last one? I could pick this value and this value, right? I could pick uh, this one and this one. So I could pick this i and this j. Remember, j has to be greater than i. And then add them up. So then one plus zero is one. So then I could get one, negative one, and then replace the j value with one. Okay. So this is, these are the arrays I could get just from picking these two in indices and adding them up and then replacing the, the jth value with that the sum of those two indices, okay? So that's an operation that we're doing. So now the problem statement is basically is that given an array, any numbers like a1, a2, a3, yada yada. So this is the problem statement. Given an array, can I get to b, b1, b2, b3, can I, given an array, a1, a2, a3, yada, yada, can I get to b, b1, b2, b3, the second array, by using these operations, by using any one of these operations. So by picking two indices, adding them up, and then replacing the second indice, uh, the second indice value with the, the sum of the two. So that's the problem statement. So now let's go over the test cases of the input values and see what we did. So in the test cases, we say that here, I could get to output a yes from one, negative one, zero, and one, one, negative two. And what is the reason why? Well, the reason why is because, let's say I were to have one, negative one, zero, and I want to get to B, one, one, negative two. So what do I do? I could pick Okay, so I could add these two up, I, this i, this j, and then I add them up, and I could have one, negative one, and then i plus j, negative one plus zero is negative one, so then that's negative one. And then I could pick it again, two and three, then I get one, negative one, then add negative one plus negative one is negative two, replace that with there, okay? So that I get one, negative one, negative two. Then to get one, one, negative two, I could pick these two values, add them up, so then I get one, zero, negative two. And I pick, could pick these two values again. So then I could get one, one, negative two. Okay, so those are the operations I could do to get from A to B. Let's look at this case. One, zero, 141. So one, zero, 141. And the reason why this is yes is that I could actually just add one to zero that many times. So zero plus one is one, and then I could do it 41 times and then I'll get 141 and that'll be the same thing as this B value. Okay, and then let's look at this one. Negative one, zero, negative one, negative 41. So what did they, they do? They took negative one, added with zero, and they did that 41 times. So I generally know the operations to do, but I don't know how to get to the answer the solution. Okay, I don't, you don't actually know how to get there unless you physically brute force it, but there's a pattern, okay? Let's say my, this value, whatever I'm, I'm looking at here is less than this value, right? Negative one is less than one. Well, how can I get negative one to one? Easy, I add one that many number of times, right? If I could take negative one, just keep adding one and one and one and one, sooner or later, I will get to this value, one. And it doesn't matter if this value is one, 100, 200, 300, whatever value. If this value is greater than this, if I, right, I could, I just, all I need to do is add in one, and then I would be able to get this number. So as long as there's a number one in my previous array here, I could get to this value one, okay? That, that's basically 
That's that. Now, what if this value is greater than it? So what if my current A value here, this is my array A, array B, what if my value here is greater than this value, right? Well, if my value A is greater than my value B, then how am I supposed to do it by getting to this value B? Simple, I just have to subtract one that many times, right? So like if I were to get, if I wanna to get to from zero to negative 41, I just have to subtract negative one 41 times, right? And how do I do that? Well, simple, if there's a negative one in my array A here, any negative one values, I could just add these two together side by side that many number of times and I would get negative 41. Okay, so if my value, my A value is larger than my value of my B value at a certain index, I have to make sure there's a negative one there so then I could just keep adding and then I get negative 41. And that makes it to have yes. So there's two cases. One is that if the value is less than, then I have to make sure there's a one in the, my array A that, that I could add it up with and then I could get my whatever value I'm at. And the second case is um, my value is less than it. If zero is less than negative 41, I have to make sure there's a negative one in any of my values in my array A, and then I could add those two, pick those two value up, keep adding them, keep subtracting negative one from it, then I would get my smaller value. And that's it, that's pretty much the whole algorithm of this. I'm gonna show you guys the code now, and that's pretty much it. All right guys, so I'm gonna go over the code right now. So. I read in T to test cases, and I read in N, which is the length of my array. I have my array A and B. I create a same same Boolean, which checks if both of the arrays are the same. So I'm gonna read in A, and then I'm gonna read in B, and then if uh, B is not equal to A, I just know that the same same is false. I create a Boolean called possible is equal to true, and I create a Boolean called has a negative one and has one, and then I set both of them as false. All right, guys. So when I remember, I said that uh, the array had to have a one and a negative one, right? Right. Uh, that is true. Except it, remember, the one and the negative one has to be before the the value of what you're what you searched it at. All right. I forgot to mention that. So like, if if I remember, if I'd said like um, a of i is less than b of i, that means that I had to have a negative. I had to have a one before it. I had out of one before the index that I'm currently at checking it. Okay, so I had to, I had to have a value one before the index of i. So at least some position before the index of i. Okay, so yeah, so I loop through from i equals zero to the end of the array. I check if my a of i is less than the b of i, and I and then I check if I don't have a one. So if I don't have a one, then I'm going to set possible equal to false. If then I check. Um, if my array at i is greater than b of i, then I have to check uh, if it doesn't have a negative one, then I set the po possible equal to false. And then these conditions uh, check if it's uh, like had a one or negative one before it, right? So ai is equal to one, then I said has one equal to true. If ai is equal to negative one, I said has negative equal to true. And that's pretty much it. Then I have if it's the same, so remember if the arrays are the same, then I have to set the possible equal to true because like that means that both of them, you, if you could do no operations, remember. So that's if the arrays are the same, then you could do no operations. Um, yeah, so then uh, my last if is a, if it's possible, I print out yes, otherwise I print out no. So yeah, that's the code here. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.